We're here. We're back. It's Thursday, the ninth day of December 2021. I'm Dan Coos, and uh, we're happy that you started your day us, with us here on the NCP Life Channel with this edition of Wake Up in Anche Valley. A little cool, a few high clouds, 30 degrees outside of our studios. Pretty quiet next day and a half. Things are going to get a little more active, though, over the weekend. Some light snow expected here on the valley floor. It's not going to stick around, but we're going to get a little dusting which is fine by me, get you in the Christmas spirit. Forecast details are coming up, as you might imagine, the pass is once again not a particularly pleasant uh, adventure, and it would be an adventure to drive over the mountain passes today. They had to shut down Suquamish Pass for quite some time yesterday because of the heavy snow and the heavy traffic and spin outs and all that stuff. It's open now, Suquamish Pass is, but it's not particularly easy to get through. We'll get you your pass report here. In just a couple of minutes, we got sports, we got news, we got everything else that you're used to. Thursday, pause for pets. Yeah, Yukon the dog needs a home. We'll visit with our good friends at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And a couple of days ago, via Zoom, our own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to uh, check up with the good folks at uh, Leavenworth's Village Voices, who didn't have much of a year last year. You know, COVID is transmitted in the air, you know, breathing and all that stuff. And when you get a whole bunch of people together in a small room singing, it could be a problem. So they didn't really do much, but the Leavenworth Village Voices are back as they get ready to celebrate their 40th anniversary. We have a great feature put together by our own JR. It'll come your way in the back half of the program. All right, let's get going. Let's uh, start our tour. We should have some pretty good cameras today. Not nearly as foggy as it was yesterday at this time. And that is a beautiful view of the Wenatchee Valley Again, from the cross camera, which always begins our festivities. Just a little bit of light snow at the top of uh, Birch Mountain. And that's about all we got right now. But uh, my guess is when we come and visit on Monday, we're going to see a little bit more snow uh, above the Sunny Slope area. I'm just spitballing here, but I think we're going to get a little bit of the white stuff. That's what it's looking like anyway. Beautiful view. Camera two, I have no idea what we're going to, ah, Badger Mountain checks in. Well, not Badger Mountain, it's Wenatchee we're looking at from the Badger Mountain camera. Uh, you can see, uh, well, you can see almost all of Wenatchee. That's, that's, a, that's a cool view, a little slice of East Wenatchee. Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval is in, within view as well. In fact, we're going to be uh, scheduled to talk to Jeremy Anders, the general manager of the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. Their big end of the year awards banquet is coming up, and they're also participating in the NCW Community Toy Drive. It'll be good to check in with Jeremy. We'll, we're endeavoring to make that happen here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. In the meantime, good morning to Wenatchee proper, uh, looking back west from the Badger Mountain camera. Let's go to number four, number three. McNeil Canyon chimes in as we say good morning to Lake Chelan, and there's, there's snow almost right to the lake's edge up there. Good morning, Lake Chelan. You can make out the airport a little bit to your right. And uh, you can, you can that's, a, that's a cool view from McNeil Canyon. That, of course, that camera is on a very high tower. That's how the SkyFi system works. The higher up the cameras, the higher up the, the uh, dishes are, the better off for po folks who use SkyFi. Good morning to Chelan, camera four. Lake Wenatchee, hello, Lake Wenatchee. It wasn't that long ago when there wasn't any snow at all up there except for just a little bit on the north face of Dirty Face, but now there's a few more snowflakes on the ground as we check in from our Nanapak Ridge camera looking at. You can see almost all of Lake Wenatchee there. Spectacular view, Cater Glen at the bottom of your screen. Good morning to Lake Wenatchee. Now Lake Wenatchee freezes over every year and I've always, I've always wanted to know, do they, does it freeze from the bottom up or from the top down? If you know the answer to that, let me know, will you? Just curious, I don't know. Good morning, Lake Wenatchee. Good to see you. All right, we have a couple of slides to show for you from the National Weather Service. First of all, it's going to be another bad day of driving in the mountain passes. They have a winter weather advisory that's going on right now today. And then things get even more serious tomorrow. They have a winter storm watch for the weekend. That can very well become a winter storm warning. I would not be surprised if they do that. Uh, it is going to snow a lot on the mountain passes. When we get to the mountain pass report, I'll let you know exactly how much snow is forecast for the uh, Cascades, specifically Stevens, Blewett, and Snoqualmie. It's going to be quite a bit, especially on Stevens and I-90. So get ready for some more snow coming down over the next four days or so, right through the weekend. 
and the amount of snow they're going to get is pretty dramatic. Finally, the weekend outlook. Going to be a little bit of everything for you folks out in the Columbia Basin, Moses Lake, and up in the Waterville Plateau. Get ready for some uh, windy conditions on Saturday as the next system moves in over the weekend, which is going to produce all that heavy mountain snow with some rain in the Wenatchee Valley. Valley snow on Saturday, especially up north. The Medhow Valley, you're going to get some snow. Perhaps the Omak Okanagan area could get a little bit of snow right on the valley floor. And it may be, it's supposed to be pretty wet snow, but they could get two, three, even four inches uh, up in uh, Mazama, Winthrop, Twisp. It's a possibility. And then on Saturday into Sunday, more snow for the mountain passes. The mountain passes are just going to get a lot of snow. There's just no other way around it. So, without further ado, from the National Weather Service, here is your forecast in detail. Lots of sunshine today. We'll top off at about 40 degrees. We're going to have a few clouds this morning. It'll burn off in the afternoon about 40 degrees, maybe 41. We hit 45 yesterday. We did have quite a bit of afternoon sunshine, so it was a very mild day on Thursday. Our normal high this time of the year is 35. We hit 45 yesterday. We'll be warmer uh, than normal again today. 27 for the overnight low tonight. An isolated snowflake or two possible but there's no real precipitation out there. Now the snow level is going to start creeping down a little bit. It'll be at 1,100 feet on Friday. We're not expecting any significant snow on Friday during the day, but Friday night, the snow level at about 1,600 feet, we're going to get about a half an inch of snow here in the Wenatchee Valley Friday night into Saturday. Just a heads up, Friday night into Saturday. If you get up on Saturday morning, don't be surprised at all if there's a half an inch or maybe even an inch of snow on the ground here in the Wenatchee Valley, but it's going to switch over to rain. On Saturday, the snow level will begin at 1,600 feet at sunrise, but by the time we get to Saturday afternoon, it's going to go up to about 3,100 feet, so it'll switch over on, uh, on Saturday from snow to rain by Saturday afternoon. As you can see, very mild, 45 for the afternoon high. Saturday night, snow level goes right back down to 800 feet, but the, uh, the storm system is going to start petering out on Saturday night. It's going to lose a lot of its momentum, so we're not expecting a great deal of snow here in the Wenatchee Valley. If we get any at all, whatever snow we get is going to be gone by Sunday afternoon. As the snow level goes back up, we'll see some sun breaks. Highs will be in the lower 40s. Monday, lots of clouds, maybe a snowflake. I would not be surprised at all if we see some snow early Monday morning for your morning commute and a high of about 40 degrees. So fairly unsettled weather is in the forecast for the Wenatchee Valley. Now, the passes. Brought to you by D.A. Davidson, the strength of a trusted partner and personalized solutions to meet your financial needs. Remember SIPC. Right now, Stevens Pass is a traction tower requirement. It is snowing, but it's not snowing real hard on Stevens Pass. you got compact snow and ice on the roadway. Again, traction tires are required. Snowing lately on US-2. Blew it. Uh, it is snowing. It is starting to stick to the roadway a little bit. Traction tires are advised on US-97. Blew it. You're going to be dealing with some snow, some slush, and some ice at the summit of US 97 and not surprisingly I-90 is once again not very pleasant. Chains are required on all vehicles both directions unless you have all-wheel drive. Uh, it is uh, snowing, compact snow, slush and ice on the roadway and it is going to snow most of the day today up in the Cascades. Chains required on I-90. Traction tires advised on Blewett. Traction tires are required on Stevens Pass. Now they have a winter weather advisory today. A winter storm watch begins over the weekend, here are your snow totals for today for the mountain passes. Three to seven inches. Tonight, three to five inches. Friday, an additional two to four inches. Friday night, an additional five to nine inches. The big dump on Saturday, it's going to snow all day Saturday. Nine to 13 inches of snow in the mountain passes on Saturday and an additional four to eight inches of snow possible on Saturday night. So between today and Saturday night, the mountain passes will be dealing with anywhere from 26 to 46 inches of new snow. And it looks like it's going to snow right on into Sunday and Sunday night as well. So the mountain passes are going to be quite treacherous indeed for the next four or five days at least, perhaps even longer. All right, you're up to date with your weather and the passes. It's 10 minutes after the hour, and we'll get you up to date with what you need to know to get your Thursday going with the news. It's one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Nature Valley on the NCW Live channel.
I'm Dr. Malcolm Butler. I'm a family physician here at CVCH, and I've been a family physician here for the past 28 years. For 25 of those years, I've been the chief medical officer, and now I get to return to my first passion, which is the delivery of primary care. I'm looking forward to welcoming you and your family to join me as I practice three days a week in our 600 Orondo building in Wenatchee. Outside of a few high clouds, it's fairly clear, 28 degrees now in downtown Wenatchee, right around the 40 degree mark with quite a bit of afternoon sunshine. Basically, today is gonna to be pretty much like yesterday, maybe a couple of degrees cooler. Some light snow possible early Friday morning for your Friday morning commute, and then hit and miss snow showers with some rain mixed in and fairly mild temperatures expected over the weekend, but lots of snow in the Cascades. We begin with this story, a 76 year old driver of a horse-drawn sleigh was killed last Thursday afternoon in Leavenworth after a wheel fell off and he was thrown from the sleigh. Schlein County Coroner Wayne Harris said four people riding on the Icicle Outfitters sleigh were able to get out safely after the wheel came off. But as driver Frederick Duzan was trying to get control of the horses, the horses spooked and he was thrown from the sleigh and he hit his head on a boulder. The accident happened about 3.45 last Thursday afternoon near the Leavenworth Fish Hatchery on a back road near the river. The horses reportedly had to be rescued from the river. Harris said Duzan was killed by a blunt impact to his head. A Moses Lake chiropractor has lost his license for at least the next three years for fondling his patients. The 42-month suspension comes five years after the State Department of Health began investigating Richard Rebellia. 11 women patients testified that Rebellia exposed their breasts unnecessarily and touched them inappropriately during treatment. He had never been criminally charged, by the way. Before his license can be reinstated, the Department of uh, Health says Rebellia must pay a $5,000 fine. He has to pass a psychosexual evaluation and he needs to notify all potential patients of his case, among other requirements. He also must be chaperoned if he ever treats female patients again. A Michigan man accused of attacking and strangling a Wenatchee woman uh, is now being charged with attempted murder. 33-year-old James Lawrence Jackson Smith. Well, he's been in jail since the alleged attack back on May 20th at the North Miller Street Super 8 Hotel. Schlein County prosecutors filed the new attempted murder charge this week on top of the initial counts of first degree assault and kidnapping. Wenatchee police say he lured the hotel staffer to his room, complaining of a broken toilet, then attacked her from behind and tried to choke her until she was able to break free. Jackson Smith then fled in a vehicle and he was caught by East Wenatchee police on Highway 28, just south of East Wenatchee. Prosecutors say they've made a plea offer in the case, but if he does not accept it, Jackson Smith will face trial next week. <clears throat> After nine months of work and community input, the Chelan County PUD and the City of Wenatchee on Tuesday unveiled their 15-year master plan for Riverfront Park. The plan includes 14 projects in three phases stretching from just south of Pibus Market to just north of 5th Street. Work on the first phase will begin next year. It'll include building a splash pad and creating separate paths on the Apple Capital Loop Trail for pedestrians and bike riders. The splash pad will be next to the restrooms north of the 5th Street roundabout will also include a new picnic pavilion. The first phase, which will run through 2026, will also include a trained themed play area and improvements to the depot for the Wenatchee Riverfront Railway. The first phase will cost between four and four and a half million dollars. Most of the expenses will be split evenly between the Chelan County PUD and the city of Wenatchee. State Senator Brad Hawkins says it should be easier for small school districts to consolidate. The 12th District Republican has pre-filed a bill to increase construction funds for districts that agree to merge. He says this might incentivize small districts to consolidate with similar districts nearby, which in turn could reduce the amount of tax money each district spends per student. State records show small districts in Hawkins constituency have spent up to $27,000 per student last academic year compared to roughly $17,000, which is the statewide average. Events at the Town Toyota Center have returned in full force. Concerts, special events, Wenatchee Wild Hockey, and of course, 
the Christmas Extravaganza Holiday Dreams coming to the Town Toyota Center on Wednesday the 15th. I had a chance to sit down and talk to Mark Miller, the general manager of the Town Toyota Center. We talked about what it's like to operate the arena under the state's COVID-19 restrictions and the improvements that were made to the Town Toyota Center during the downtime. Are you guys back to normal? Pretty much. I mean, but here's where we are. I, I, um, we are safety first right. and firm believers in that. We will be following the, the mandates for arenas, which means masks are required. Uh, whether if you're not e actively eating or drinking. Also, uh, vaccination cards are also now a part of the process. So uh, you can just flash your vax card. If you don't have a vaccination card, a negative test um, uh, within the past 72 hours will also suffice. So it will be a safe environment uh, for all. And um, as a matter of fact, even if um, wh where the, the, the world is, um, and yet again, we, we need people here um, you know, w w with us enjoying live entertainment. But if it's something of the safety factor that, that's still a part of your world, um, then um, you can also pay it forward. So you, you can um, um, you know, bring a first responder or bring uh, someone else that wants to support live entertainment, which is so desperately important, and, um, and give those away to someone that will enjoy it. So you can pay it forward. But yes, it will be safety protocols here for the Cirque style holiday extravaganza show December 15th. The Town Toyota Center went complete uh, new touchless restrooms uh, as a part of a, a safety first protocol and, um, and then um, yes a, a, a new sound system has been installed and is up and running for, uh, for, for wild games and I think it, our goal was to when we welcome our patrons back is they see the first class high impact entertainment center that we strive to be. Finally this morning, Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort reopens this morning at 9 a.m. after not being able to have skiing for more than a week because of that warm weather we had last week. The ski hill uh, achieved its Thanksgiving weekend opening date goal this year, but then record-breaking warmth forced the shutdown right after that. Colder weather, though, on the mountain this week has allowed a Mission Ridge to resume around-the-clock snowmaking efforts. The Stevens Pass Ski Resort, by the way, have not yet announced an opening date for their season, but they said on Tuesday conditions are improving and Stevens Pass could open next week. But Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort will be reopened again starting this morning at 9 a.m. That's what's making news here uh, at uh, 18 minutes after the hour. We'll have a newscast for you tonight at 5, at 6, and at 10 with Grant Olson in the anchor chair. And with a preview, here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll bring you our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Scattered showers today in our forecast and maybe on Friday, and then things get wet this weekend. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom has results from a full slate of college basketball last night, as well as a look at tonight's Kraken Winnipeg Jets hockey matchup. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Don't forget, if you have a news tip or you want to drop us a note and say hi, you can do it as long as you have access to the World Wide Web or a telephone. For that matter, you can go to our Facebook page and use the Messenger app. You can go to our homepage, ncwlife.com, and click on the Contact Us icon, or you can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. After a quick one-minute break, we'll talk about Seattle Seahawks football. Bad news for the defensive secondary. Jamal Adams is out for the year. We'll also talk uh, college basketball. High school basketball, hockey as well. When we get to sports, we'll have the obscure holiday, today in history, some celebrity birthdays. An opinion from Mike Mad Dog Magnani. We'll check in with our good friends at Leavenworth Village Voices, and we'll have Paws for Pets as well. It's a Thursday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. 
Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Pro. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Pro in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Twenty-one minutes after the hour, Jamal Adams done for the year. The announcement was made yesterday that Adams suffered a season-ending injury to his shoulder. He will require surgery. Coach Pete Carroll said he, the coaching staff, and Jamal's teammates pretty upset. As you guys heard Jamal Adams is going to have surgery. Uh, I think it's tomorrow on his shoulder, and unfortunately, he got hit just just the wrong way, and. and uh, you know, and he's going to have to get fixed up. He's been through this before, and uh, he's, you know he's really rocked by it, of course. But um, you know, we're all pulling for him to come out and, and, and get out of this thing, get back as soon as possible. But it's another playmaker out there, a guy that you have to plan for in the game plan. You got to know where he's at. You know, if you uh, you know when you're watching film, you can see that that you know offenses have to know where he's at because they have to be conscious of him um, blitzing. And so um, you know, it's going to be a lot from his his leadership, his energy, his passion for the game. Um, you know, we're definitely gonna gonna miss that. I think everybody knows how much of an impact Jamal's made on this team, as well as our defense. You can't really replace a guy like that, and there's no doubt. Energy, uh, his enthusiasm, his, uh, his what he brings to the team, and how hard he works, uh, and uh, you can't replace him. Adams is out. Ryan Neal, a fourth-year safety, will be taking his place for the rest of the year. Neal says he's devastated for his teammates, but he's gonna do his best. You hate seeing something like this happen to somebody who works extremely hard at their craft, um, gives it everything, is very passionate, uh, and to have that happen to him again, um, it sucks. It's a, it's, it's, it's a big blow. Um, you're losing a special guy like that who means a lot to everybody on the team. And um, fortunately, it's the second <laughs> time this happened in kind of a similar fashion, which is crazy. But for me, it's just the same thing. You know, just step in, be accountable, be there for the people around me, be there for my team. You know, the defense, the coaches, everything. You know, of course, it's an opportunity for me, but it ain't even about me. You know what I mean? It's about everybody else, and how can we keep this thing rolling in the direction that we got it? So my whole mindset is step in, do my job, do it to the best of my ability to help us win games, and that's just how I'm looking at it. It's the Seahawks and the Houston Texans. It's Sunday morning football, 10 o'clock on Fox. The Washington State women's basketball team recovered from a 12-point deficit, came back to beat Gonzaga. 51 to 49 last night. Charlize Ledger Walker led the way with 14 points. Kaylin Truong had 13 defense and hustle plays. Made the difference down the stretch for the Lady Cougars. Here's O'Connor. Slashes through the paint. Had her shot blocked by Ula Matuga. I feel like both these teams came into the season with a chip on the shoulder. And there's a nice bucket down low for Charlize Ledger Walker. Just a great call coming out of the timeout to get your player involved. That she did not finish that layup. That pass intercepted by Charlize Ledger Walker. That was the 20th turnover on the night. Here's a shot from Emma Nankervis. She got it to fall from the baseline. Relays a play call to her team. They work it down low to Wallach, and Wallach puts it off the glass in from that wing and just sneaks in there to get those extra looks. Ledger Walker with a steal. She lays it up and in on the other end. She feeds it down low to Ejim. Back to Walker for three in the win. No good. It's off the mark. Washington State comes to Spokane and escapes with a 51 to 49 win. Coach Kimmy Etheridge uh, was quite happy. It's the first time that the Lady Cougars have beaten Gonzaga since uh, she took over the program in Pullman. We knew and we talked a lot about Gonzaga and all the problems they, they present and, and what their physicality and, and how disciplined they are and what they do um, has just killed us in the past because we've been kind of not physical enough to play with them. And so... Um, I think that they understand that this is a real statement game kind of for our program of, of where we're going, what we've, what, and how we've grown and how now all of a sudden we can, we can guard at this level. I think a year ago or maybe two years ago when we were here, we would have been down 20 points at half just because we didn't have the mindset that we do this year on the defensive end to stay with it, to stick with it. 
Um, even when things aren't going good on the offensive end, the ball's not going in the basket, keep your stuff in the game. And, you know, obviously I thought we kept ourselves in the game and then made some just an amazing uh, game-winning plays in the second half. All right, to the Les Schwab men's college basketball scoreboard from last night, Colorado handed Eastern Washington a 60-57 to defeat despite 23 points from Steel Venters and 11 points from Mason Landek. In Pullman, Washington State blew out Weber State 94-60. to Balance scoring led the way. Four Cougars had double figures in scoring. Noah Williams leading the way with 17 points. Co Coach Kyle Smith, all smiles afterwards. Uh, needless to say, that uh, that was a great win for us. Um, really didn't see it. it was a closer game than that at the final score, but it was nice to see us put the put the pedal down on the and finish that game really strong. And uh, thought we played one of our best uh, games, uh, start to finish, and um, especially offensively and moving the ball and got a. Uh, two games worth of assists for us. That was, that, was, that was nice to see. Coming up tonight, the fifth-ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs, who've lost two in a row, will take on Merrimack at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Six o'clock, the game will be carried on some of the Root Sports Network. Other Root Sports people will be able to watch the Kraken game uh, in NHL action tonight. Seattle will host Winnipeg at the Climate Pledge Arena. They'll drop the puck at 7 o'clock. All right, local prep sports schedule. We'll begin with girls bowling. Eastmont will travel to Eisenhower today at 3 o'clock. Also at Mendel Lanes in Yakima, the gateway to Moxie. We'll have Wenatchee at Davis at 3. And Moses Lake will take on Sela on the road at 3.30. Girls basketball tonight. Cascade will host Clay Ellum Roslin at 5.45. That's also the start time for OMAC at Cashmere. Shalane at Quincy. Andy App will host Cascade Christian Academy at 6 o'clock. Boys basketball tonight. The Kodiaks will host Clay Ellum Roslin at 7.15. Shalane is in Quincy. At 7.15, Cashman will host OMAC at 7.15. Andy S. game against Cascade Christian will tip off at 7.30. Also, wrestling matches on tap tonight. Eastmont will host Davis. When H is on the road at Eisenhower, Afraid will host Othello. All the matches are scheduled to start at 7 o'clock. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this ninth day of December. The obscure holiday of the day. Here we go again. More food related. It's pastry day today. Yesterday we did brownies. Today we're doing pastries. I think I'm gaining weight just by doing the obscure holiday with food-related stuff. Pastries go all the way back to the ancient Romans and Greeks, but not how we know them today. The oldest known pastry that's still made pretty much the same way over the centuries is uh, baklava. It pretty much remains unchanged because people like it. Pastry chefs still are in demand, chefs who specifically do nothing but make tarts and berry filled and cream filled croissants and what have you. Uh, so pop to your local bakery and pick up an apple turnover or a croissant or a cinnamon swirl or any kind of pastry. Uh, and it goes good with a cup of coffee. You get that sugar rush, you get some fruit, and you're in. National, that looks good, National Pastry Day today. I'm sure there's gonna be pastry stores out there uh, that will have specials. I just don't know of them. 29 minutes after the hour. Three interesting uh, things in today in history. This is the original uh, advertisement from uh, the Washington Post, December 9th, uh, 1965. 56 years ago today, a Charlie Brown Christmas debuts on CBS on national television. Of course, is now one of the iconic Christmas specials. It was the very first ever Peanuts cartoon. They had never made a cartoon, an animated cartoon for television before a Charlie Brown Christmas. They didn't get the final product done with everything that you need to do, the animation, the voiceover, the graphics, the editing, everything. It wasn't done until 10 days before it was scheduled to air, and they played the special for CBS executives and the creators of a Charlie Brown Christmas. And they all sat in the security room and watched the 26-minute cartoon that they just made, and everybody went, oh, this is a disaster. They didn't, CBS executives didn't like it. The creative team thought it wasn't gonna work. They didn't like the animation. There was sinking, there was all kinds of issues with it. And CBS wanted to make wholesale changes to a Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, but they said, it's a cartoon. It airs in 10 days. We can't make the changes in time. We're just gonna have to air it as it is. So they aired it as it is. And now of course, everybody loves it. Just think about it, if they had enough time to change a bunch of the elements to a Charlie Brown Christmas, it wouldn't be what we know today. It made its debut on national television 56 years ago today. 42 years ago today, it was 
certified. The World Health Organization made it official. Smallpox eradicated. Done with toast. It's one of only two diseases that has been absolutely driven to extinction. The other uh, being uh, rinderpest, which was declared done in 2011. The eradication of the smallpox, smallpox virus made official on this date 42 years ago today. Smallpox is dead. And the saga of Bush v. Gore in the 2000 presidential election is now getting to a head. Uh, on this date uh, in 2000, 21 years ago today, the, the United States Supreme Court votes 5-4 to four to stop the hand recount that had been ordered the day before by the state of Florida Supreme Court. It didn't end everything quite yet, but it was a significant legal blow to Al Gore and his team to win the presidency. Of course, there would be an appeal and then one final argument before the Supreme Court. But this was uh, the tipping point for Al Gore's presidential hopes. It didn't look real good, and it didn't get much better. 31 minutes after the hour, birthdays. I'll get you, you little pretty, and your dog, too. Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch of the West, uh, from, uh, what's the name of that movie? It had the munchkins and the, if I only had a brain, I can't remember the name of the movie. Anyway, uh, Margaret Hamilton, uh, from The Wizard of Oz, was born in the state in 1902. Um, she, of course, was typecast. I mean, you know, she's the Wicked Witch of the West, but she loved kids. She ran uh, all kinds of charities for kids. The kids were scared of her for the rest of her life. You're the one again. Margaret Hamilton, born in the state in 1902, died at the age of 82 in 1985. Tip O'Neill, one of my favorite politicians back in the day, he was a Speaker of the House of Representatives for 10 consecutive years, which is longer from a consecutive year standpoint than any speaker in history from 1977 to 1987. Uh, from Massachusetts, the great Tip O'Neill, born in the state in 1912, died in 1994 at the age of 81. His famous quote, all politics is local. Tip O'Neill. Uh, Kirk Douglas, of course, we lost Kirk last year at the age of 103, the iconic actor and movie, and movie producer as well, the great Kirk Douglas, born on this date a long time ago. Dick Buckdis is 79 years old today. Happy birthday to Dick. He's in the, he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, inducted in 1979. He was asked by a reporter once if the rumors were true that he was just a mean, ornery, nasty guy out on the football field, and Dick Buckdis said, no, I never go out and try and hurt anybody on the football field deliberately unless it was important, like, like a league game or something like that. Dick Buckdis, 79 years old today. John Malkovic, the American actor. I'll watch him in anything. He's, he's just too darn good. He's 68 years old today. I find him fascinating. 33 minutes after the hour, still to come, an opinion from Mike Mad Dog Mignotti. Uh, Jefferson Robbins had a chance to sit down and talk to the good folks at Village Voices. They are back, our friends in Leavenworth. But first things first, Yukon the dog needs a home. Let's pause for pets. This week on Pause for Pets, Jenny from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society introduces us to Yukon, a young lab mix looking for an adventure partner. This is uh, Yukon here. He will be two in March, so he's still a young guy learning all that he needs to learn. Um, he seems to be pretty smart and has picked up quickly to, whoops, come here, hey, to leash routines here at the shelter, door routines. He knows sit. He's super treat motivated, so he'd be pretty easy to continue working with. Come here, hey, hey, sit, sit, good boy. Um, he's kind of looking for that home that somebody wants to actually probably adventure with and like give him exercise because he is a pretty energetic guy, but energetic in a good way. Like he can definitely go the distance and uh, be somebody's buddy. He needs a little bit more leash work. Um, but like I said, he is treat motivated and super willing to learn. Um, he's just waiting for that home that's going to give him some attention and come here, bud, and guidance to, hey, come on, sit. attention and guidance to be a good dog. Hey, hey, come on, sit, sit, come on. Um, he does have to be in a home with no cats, though, because cats are a little too excited to be in a home with cats so he does need that cat free home um, 
But Yukon is ready. Whoops, come here. Come here, buddy. Come on, sit. Yukon's ready to go today. <laughs> like, like, ready as can be, huh? Oh my gosh, you're a handful. You are a handful, but we love you, huh? If you are interested in meeting and adopting Yukon, the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and closed 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. for quiet hour. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. of Wenatchee believes a clean home is a happy home. Mary Mates provides holiday cleaning services to cheer about. Don't let the seasonal cleaning ruin the festive fun. Mary Mates can simplify your life at a great value. It's never too soon to start planning a holiday perfect home. Mary Mates of Wenatchee happily offers a worry-free guarantee. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Mates do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Call Mary Mates today. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. You got everything? Yep. How's your knee? Still a little sore, but I've been resting it. Did they give you anything to help with the pain? Well, I talked to my doctor about possibly taking opioids, but I just don't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. They can be very addictive. That's pretty smart. Physical therapy, ibuprofen, and rest seems to be working just fine. Nice. Yeah. Let's do this. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me, it's my husband. I think he's had something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. Rivercom means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible and come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. This holiday season, let Wild Birds Unlimited help you deliver something truly special to friends and loved ones, the gift of bird feeding. Even if you can't be together in person this year, a busy backyard bird feeder will bring a little smile and a little connection with you. We're here for you with safe, convenient shopping, whether it's in store, at curbside, or when you order online. Wild Birds Unlimited, joy delivered. Are you frustrated because you feel like you aren't getting the internet speeds you pay for? One of the most common ways to test your internet connection is called a speed test. These are free and easily located on the internet and can tell you how fast your internet is. However, for certain reasons, these tests may not always be accurate. A speed test shows you how fast a file can be downloaded to the computer you're running the test on. However, there are many things that can affect the speed of that download besides the speed of the internet going into your home. A few of the things that can affect your internet speed are poor Wi-Fi signal, other wireless signals interfering with the wireless signals coming from your router, other devices in your home draining your bandwidth, your computer or phone running apps programs in the background that you aren't aware of, slowing your entire device. Any of these things can slow down your internet. Your internet is like water flowing down a pipe. There's a big pipe bringing internet to your local area and a smaller pipe coming off of that bringing internet to your home address. 
Your router is just another pipe that brings the internet inside your house, and every device inside your home is like a pipe connected to the router. Just like with water, if any of those pipes along the way are too small for the amount of internet that needs to flow through for a family, the flow for everything down the line will be much slower. It's a lot like trying to push all the water going into your house through a small straw. Also, again, just like with water, if everyone in your home is using the internet at once, any individual device may not be able to receive the full flow of the internet. It's like your whole family trying to drink out of that small straw all at once. If you're struggling with internet that is slower than expected, make sure that all of the devices that your internet flows through are working correctly, and check all devices in your home for background programs that may be using the internet. If everything still appears to be working correctly, contact us and we'll be able to help. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, I recently saw a tourism ad for Seattle. You know, those ads that promote a city, a state, telling you how great it is to visit. So it's so great that you need to come and spend all your money. You know what ad I'm talking about. Well, this ad was basically telling you that Seattle was clean and safe, and it ended by saying something like, come to Seatown. <laughs> Seatown? I have the feeling that the city of Seattle is trying to improve its image, and I'd have to say, Seattle's image needs improving. I don't think I need to go into a lot of detail about that, but Seattle is not the city it was when Rosie and I were living there back in the late 70s. And calling himself Seatown? This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating has been serving North Central Washington since 1984 providing the finest Bryant systems for both your heating and cooling needs. Along with prompt and professional service for both your residential and commercial needs, they also offer service and maintenance on your gas fireplaces. As always, Arctic is available 24 hours a day for any of your emergency calls. Whatever it takes. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, the temperature experts. Lake Chelan's annual small town holidays this November 26th through December 31st. Chelan will be blanketed in magical holiday festivities with fireworks every weekend. Enjoy wineries, boutiques, and restaurants all dressed up for the season as you take in the beautiful views, the award-winning wines, and fun for all. Looking for the perfect escape this holiday season? Hey, we've got the magic. You bring the cheer. What better way to celebrate small town holidays than to experience wine in Washington's paradise? I'm Dr. Wayne Latimer. I'm a chiropractic physician. I have postgraduate certifications in both whiplash, trauma, and rehab, as well as sports medicine. The location is great. The light and the visibility, the 17-foot ceilings are fantastic. You can go into a lot of clinics, and it's very clinical. People really like the spa environment, so my whole premise was take a spa environment, add the very serious rehab, and give people an enjoyable way to get better over time. Are you a take charge kind of person? Consider a career as a health unit coordinator. You'll work to keep health facilities running efficiently by coordinating medical providers, patients, and departments. The Charter College Certificate in Health Unit Coordinator Program can get you up to speed on basic patient care, health records management, health and safety procedures, and medical billing. And the 10-month online program includes a computer you keep. Get started at chartercollege.edu, where we work to get you to work. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Forty-five minutes after the hour, performance by vocal groups proved to be among the very first detected super spreader events of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that meant vocal groups like Leavenworth's Village Voices, soon to celebrate its 40th anniversary, underwent some big changes in 2020. But Village Voices is back thanks to vaccines and other precautions. In fact, uh, they're throwing their very first traditional 
Christmas concerts since 2019. Our very own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to sit down with one of the organizers of Village Voices to talk about their recovery and an upcoming project with a big time name in the world of music. Yeah, performance was difficult during 2020 for everybody and choirs in particular wound up very early on finding themselves at the sort of the epicenter uh, because this was an airborne virus. Was that intimidating for your for your membership? Yes, I mean, of course, singing is um, because of projection, you know, what you're doing with your voice and the way COVID spreads, um, you know, it is a challenge, you know, it is one of those activities that um, has a higher risk. And so, um, you know, the board in the off season, you know, was really debating and contemplating what is the best approach. And, you know, the guidance was in such flux for a while. Um, we have, you know, an insurance company that we have, you know, liability concerns, but we also, um, we were not medical experts. So we felt the responsible thing to do was to follow the official guidance, uh, local and CDC. And um, that was what our insurance company also, you know, told us we had to do. And so what we had done was um, debated vigorously, but um, it came out that we, we felt it was the responsible thing to require vaccination for our members. We are singing in a pretty packed in um, environment on risers. So, um, you know, you could be singing directly behind a person at their head, you know, that kind of thing. So we felt that that was the responsible thing to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was something that was, was widely debated. And I think with the breakthrough cases too, uh, you know, we have some in our group that are um, immune compromised. So, you know, even, um, even if you've had your vaccine and there's a breakthrough case um, and you have someone that's immune compromised, we really wanted to make sure we were putting the health and safety and well-being of our members uh, first and foremost. Um, we did have some members leave. Um, but we had other members leave that was not related to that. You know, we every year we have, um, you know, people move, people have health reasons um, for leaving. We have a lot of older members, for example. So uh, we, we did lose some members, but it was not really, you know, entirely due to COVID. We had about an even number um, leave for other reasons as well. But on the upside, we actually gained um, a lot of new members from our community. So um, they've been contributing a lot to the choir. Um, and so we're really grateful to have them and we're, we're excited to have some fresh faces in our group this season. Well, given some of the restrictions that you have to work with, what will these indoor concerts look like for people who are coming to be in the audience? Yeah, we, uh, we have on all of our advertising that masks are going to be required. Uh, we are performing at other people's venues. You know, we don't have our own venue. We are guests in other people's homes, so to speak. So we will be performing at the Leavenworth Church of the Nazarene the Snowy Owl Theater with the Icicle Creek Center for the Arts, as well as Cascade High School. Those will be the five concerts this season and for the, uh, those venues. Um, and so um, out of an abundance of caution, you know, for, um, for protection of our, we have volunteers that help us, um, you know, sell tickets and greet people. So we want to just, uh, we, we feel like wearing masks, you know, we have to wear, the grocery store, we have to do it in other places. A lot of venues are actually requiring vaccination, which we are not doing but we are just requiring the courtesy of masks um, for those attending. Um, and we feel like that's a small, um, I guess, concession to make, um, you know, for the care and consideration of, of others. Do you think the choir will have to sing with masks as well? We've been hoping that we wouldn't have to, but, um, but given the breakthrough cases and things like that, um, and as I said, we do have some members that are immune compromised, um, I do think we are going to have to wear masks. We actually have these singers masks that you know, are a little bit further away from your mouth to so enable singing. We've been practicing with them in all of our rehearsals, so we're quite used to them. The sound does carry out pretty well and you know, we have the, the mics and everything else. So I don't think it will create a muffled sound. We've been practicing that way. We've, we've recorded ourselves that way. And we, um, I don't think it really has an impact on the sound. Um, what is unfortunate is everyone likes to see smiling faces and um, you'll just have to see smiling eyes, but you can hear, I mean, any, any person who sings will say, you can hear it when someone's smiling in the voice. So, um, you know, we, we hope that that will be um, a deterrent and, you know, what we can promise is that it will be a joyful and um, exciting concert season. We didn't get to do that last year. So many activities were canceled last year. Um, and so I think people uh, rightfully are excited to get back to seeing live performance, supporting the arts, and just getting this bit of Christmas joy in the holiday season. You know, not related to COVID at all, but our, our director of 20 years, Larry Henderson, decided to retire. 
And we had to find a new director and, and our accompanist uh, who's been with us for many years, she moved out of state. And so we had a rigorous process in this uh, year off as well to be interviewing for a new director and accompanist. And uh, so Mindy Wall is our new director this year. She's uh, with the Cascade um, uh, School District and she directs the high school and middle school choirs. And she's just fantastic. Uh, but she's been working us really hard. And um, I think she's definitely raised the bar and, um, you know, raising our level of performance. On a non-Christmas note, you, uh, your concert, your choir sang for Macklemore, not recently. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, I think people who are familiar with the Leavenworth Village Voice would be, you know, what? Um, yeah, um, so we were contacted this summer um, to do, a, if we would be willing, to do a, a recording session with Ryan Lewis, who's, you know, part of the Macklemore Ryan Lewis duo, um, at, a, at an all, you know, an all-day session for a, record, in a state of art recording studio to do a number of pieces. So Ryan Lewis was there as well as um, his co-producer, um, I guess I can say their sound engineer, Brian Wall. And they were absolutely great working with us. It was a very collaborative and um, fun process. Um, you know, we would make suggestions or, and he would say, oh, that's good. Or, hey, how about try this? And, and it was just a lot of fun. We uh, sang on about uh, a dozen different pieces uh, for various artists. Um, and including, you know, Macklemore being one, and then there were others as well, including like there was some um, a true crime podcast that Ryan Lewis does um, instrumental music for. And so there was kind of a really neat choir sound to go with that. So we haven't learned about any other pieces that will be released from that, but we did hear um, but the new Macklemore Ryan Lewis song um, called Next Year that was released at the end of October. Uh, we do the backing vocals on the chorus for that song. the information about our performances um, is on our website which is leavenworthvillagevoices.org it's a brand new website you can do online ticket purchases in advance um, or you can purchase tickets at the door um, but we were really excited for the music selections this year and uh, we want to share the joy of christmas with um, with everyone who comes What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. glad we went to Les Schwab. I'm glad the baby's still happy. Well, I'm just glad that along with tires, Les Schwab also does brakes, alignment, and a bunch of other safety services. I mean, if we'd gone to a cheap tire store instead, I'd be a doggone wreck. My thoughts exactly. Swing by today and get road trip ready with our always free pre-trip safety check. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Did you know that nearly 50% of pet poisoning cases involve human medications and prescription drugs? Sometimes the culprit's a curious dog, but cats get into their share of trouble as well. Other times, pet owners mistakenly give their pets their own medications that are safe to people, but toxic to their pets. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. Go to pawsandclawsvh.com for a complete list of medications to avoid or call 888-PAWS. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're gonna answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. 
You got everything? Yep. How's your knee? Still a little sore, but I've been resting it. Did they give you anything to help with the pain? Well, I talked to my doctor about possibly taking opioids, but I just didn't want to risk it. They can be very addictive. That's pretty smart. Physical therapy, ibuprofen, and rest seems to be working just fine. Nice. Yeah. Let's do this. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. All right, we are back uh, with about four minutes left in the program. Now that the sun is officially up, we thought we'd take one more little tour around north central Washington with our cameras. It's up to Billy Goat we go, and you folks... You folks in the Omak Okanagan area, you're going to get a little more of the white stuff than we're expecting down here in the Wenatchee Valley. In fact, uh, not only the Omak Okanagan Valley, but also the Methow Valley, which would be to your left as you look at that shot, is also expecting maybe some wet snow coming up this weekend. Forecast details are coming up, so it's good to see our friends up there, courtesy of the Billy Goat camera, camera two. Your eyes moving things around a little bit. Omi Gardens chimes in. Sunrise this morning, by the way, 737. Sunset tonight, 410. The sunset's not going to get any earlier than 410, but the sunrise will get gradually a little bit later. Eight hours and 33 minutes of daylight today as we uh, look out over the old station industrial area and the Stemilk campus, camera number three. Ooh, that's a cool view. Is that, is that, is that see, I don't know what we're looking at. I don't know. <laughs> Uriah says, I don't know. Okay, so we'll take, it's a, oh, that's Green's Knob. That's way up Lake Chelan Way. Okay, that's our farthest camera up uh, Lake Chelan uh, on Green's Knob. And camera number four is right back to the cross camera as we look out over the Wenatchee Valley proper. All right, we have a couple of slides to show for you from the National Weather Service. First of all, more mountain snow. Oh, baby, they're going to get a lot of it. Some of the snow accumulations that they're expecting over the next uh, three or four days are going to be a lot. By the way, right now, Stevens Pass has a traction tire requirement. Blue Pass traction tires are advised. I-90 right now, so quality chains are required unless you have all-wheel drive. The snow accumulations are just pretty heavy. Uh, for today, three to seven inches of fresh white powder expected today in the mountain passes. And then tonight, an additional three to five inches of new snow. Friday, an additional two to four inches of new snow. Friday might be the easiest day because Friday night's going to start coming down and it's not going to stop snowing until Sunday. Friday night, five to nine inches of new snow. Saturday, nine to 13 inches of new snow. Saturday night, four to eight inches of new snow. Great news for skiers and snowboarders, for people who have to drive through this stuff, not so much. So between today and Saturday night, 26 to 46 inches of badly needed fresh new snow up in the Cascades. They have a winter weather advisory for today that switches over to a winter storm watch, which is more serious come tomorrow. Now the weekend outlook, a little bit of everything. It's going to be a little windy for you folks out in the Columbia Basin, Moses Lake. Uh, you look out for some wind on a Saturday as the next system rolls through. It's going to be pretty quiet for the Wenatchee Valley today and Friday. Saturday is when that next system comes through, which is going to bring all that snow up into the Cascades and windy conditions out of the Columbia Basin. As far as snow on Saturday for the lower elevations, the Methow Valley is going to get some wet snow. Looks like maybe uh, the uh, Okanagan Omak area could get some wet snow. Not going to last particularly long because the afternoon high temperatures will be in the 40s. And then, as we already mentioned, a heavy snow in the mountains uh, pretty much starting today and lasting all through Sunday with a little bit of a couple of breaks tomorrow on Friday. All right, from the National Weather Service, here we go. Mostly sunny for the balance of the day today. We'll get to about 40 degrees, 27 for the overnight low tonight. Could see a little bit of light snow Friday. I don't think it's going to happen. But Friday night into Saturday, we could get some light snow. You could wake up Saturday morning with about a half an inch of snow here in the Wenatchee Valley before it switches over to rain in the afternoon. And that's it for us. Have a great Thursday. We'll be right back at it again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.